So, <clears throat> today is very special day. Om Ajnana Timinarandasya Jnananjana Salakaya Chakshutam Jena Tasmai Shri Guru Venama Shri Chaitanya Mano Vishnam Satapitam Jena Bhutale Soyam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Sapadantikam Bandeham Shri Guru Shri Dabada Kamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Cha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Rugunatam Bitam Tam Sajeevam Sahitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padam Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakaditam Cha Namahom Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pishtaya Bhutale Shri Mate Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namine Dhamaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvishesa Sunyavadi Pachata Desatarine Guruve Gaura Chandraya Radhikaya Tadalaya Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Namo Namaha Vancha Kalpataru Vyasya Kirpa Sindhu Vyavacha Patita Nam Pabane Bhya Vaishna Bhya Namo Namaha जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु नित्यानंद श्री अदित गदाधर शिवा साधि श्री गौर भक्त बिंदा हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा कृष्ण कृष्णा हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जगत गुरु शिल प्रभुपाद की शिल प्रभुपाद तिरुभाव तिथि महा महो सब की जय so first of all, I like to he told um I like to thank very much his holiness Janadan Maharaji because he is uh, encouraging me to speak right now. So <clears throat> by his mercy and Panjagora Prabhuji mercy also upon me here in Vindavan. So <clears throat> first of all, I like to chant and Prabhupada and, uh, and uh, Mangala Charanam because Prabhupada always have a, when he is giving class here. So he always I want to the first Mangala Charanam, then after he wants to give the class in Bindavan. Because I joined here 1975 and beginning of the 75, this tempo. Then I have a both initiation here and Prabhupada. So maybe how I take initiation, I can also explain to you. And so now first I want to chant the Mangala Charanam because I have in this Mangala Charanam in my heart. So because of this is 40 years of anniversary and Srila Prabhupada is supposed to chant in the morning, but in the morning there are so many uh, God sister, God brothers, senior than most senior than me. So you know, even the Panja Prabhu he sent, I'm sitting there next, uh, then Panja Prabhu sent to Dharmatma Prabhu, he said Panja Prabhu is calling to the stage to speak. Prabhuji, uh, you come out. I say, but um, I cannot speak only two, three minutes because I require little time because now time is very short. All the senior devotee was speaking, maybe I can speak evening, uh, afternoon time. So I say to like the morning like that to them. So now because I get opportunity, so now Maharaj giving me, uh, is, uh, for me, uh, you know, enough time to speak for uh, myself. That's why he introduced me the first here. So anyway, this is the land of Krishna, Balaram and Prabhupada land. So uh, Krishna Balaram is Bhumi. <coughs> so this is um, glorification of the uh, this prayer which is I am chanting is glorification of uh, this uh, Raman Reti or glorification of Prabhupada and our Prabhupada spiritual master Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur and plus the Gaur Nethai Radha Shyama Sundar. So this is um, Prabhupada is very much uh, interested to hear this stotra. Uh, so now I'm, I'm chanting this because I was a pujari here, so I always attend Prabhupada class. I have an opportunity, but I am that time, because I cannot ask questions because I am very shy because they, that time is all the senior most uh, higher devotee there, American, you know, big, big, big uh, talls. They are going ahead the Prabhupada, but uh, we are in the um, back side and side. We are um, hearing Prabhupada class, but uh, I hear this stotra also very much. It is a stotra introduced by one of the our uh, <coughs> Sanskrit scholar, 
um, his name is Anantana, Anantaram Sastri, but now I don't know where he's, he's gone somewhere. But for a part time, he was here and he, the Prabhupada gave him the room and guest house. So he, he was he stay here run, pal, along with the Paradumna Prabhus. So now I'm chanting this mantra. Krishna eka cheta madha maha binasa karin Madhristi gauchara prabhu prabhu pada swami Dosa bhavirti bhari dosi tamanda buddhi Sanchintayami charana tava bhakti eto Bindrabhane ramana reti prasiddha bhuma Tatra Bhikrishna Balarama Supada Mule Gyanam Param Parama Krishna Sudami Juktam Dantasta Daiba Prabhupada Namo Namaste 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 Kripa Bhuma Draste Namaste Namaste Mahananda Date Namo Namami Punaraksha Raksha Vidhe Vidhe Hibo Daksha Daksha Bhakti Siddhanta Shishyaya Bhakti Vedanta Namine Prasannaya Prasannaya Tasma Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Banga Bhumi Jana Bhushana Gaura Leela Gauranga Bhava Parisarana Matra Shila Radha Mukunda Pada Padma Mano Bilasin Ananda Bhashi Prabhupada Namo Namaste Ananda Bhashi Guru Deva Namo Namaste So, Jagat Guru Shila Prabhupada Ki? Shila Prabhupada Mangala Charan Ki? हाँ जोर से जाए तो बोलो ताकि लोग आएंगे ना यहाँ पर पेपल विल कम टू हियर फ्रॉम यू बिकॉज़ समथिंग गोइंग ऑन इन कथा परोपाद यो इसे ये पीछे साउथ जाए देन द बिजय विल कम हियर बोलो शिला परोपाद मंगलाचरण की वाह वेरी गुड जगत गुरु शिला परोपाद की थैंक यू हरे कृष्णा धन्यवाद सो एक्चुअली आई � Maharaj told me that I should introduce myself first. So, uh, I am from Nepal. So, I came here 1975 uh, from Nepal because I am from mountains in Nepal. So, I came here because I am from Brahmana family. So, I came and studied Sanskrit here. So, that time, because I don't know the Iskon Mandir here. So, uh, <clears throat> Also, that time I have no money. I was just, uh, I, um, you know, traveling all the holy places in India. Uh, I went to uh, the Haridwar also, but I was not satisfied there also. I went to Banaras also, no satisfaction. Then somebody said uh, Bindavan and somebody said Mathura. I'm hearing the name, then I came to Mathura. So I have, and uh, I, uh, get down Mathura station, but I come to Bindavan, I had no money from Mathura station to Bindavan, I came by walking that time. So by that time was uh, here, no rickshaw wala, no uh, any uh, transportation, only tanga wala was here, the, uh, coming to Mathura station to Bindavan. Uh, so, so I came by walk uh, to here, then I came walking by then, I, uh, I been that Akhanda Ananda Maharaj ashram here, near uh, this place, Moti Jhil. There's an ashram, big ashram. He's a big ashram first here. So then I stay there. They allow me to stay there, uh, that place, for um, uh, maybe 15, 20 days. Then after somebody told me, there's a, that time they said the Angrej Mandir here. They said Angrej Mandir. They don't say Bhakti Vedanta Swami Mandir, Iskon Mandir. They have say Angrej Mandir. They told me because uh, I am also like Angrej. So they say uh, the Angrej Mandir is uh, going on in the, here, the Chattikara Road. Very uh, new mandir is coming up. They say like that. So then I say, okay, I'll see. Uh, uh, then I went to Kesigat, I take a bath. Then I say, uh, let me see, check it out. Where is Angrej Mandir? So I, I came here. So that time, 12 o'clock, Arati was going on here, this temple. Very big. Other maybe 40 devotees here, they are chanting, dancing. Like, uh, the, then uh, I was standing the Arati. So that time, <coughs> uh, Samarahari Prabhu is here. Uh, that time, uh, Samarahari Prabhu here, the, his brother is uh, Girvardhari Prabhu, Gunanaba Prabhu, Dhananjaya Prabhu. They are all here that time. 
So uh, then Samrahari Bardar Girivardari, he, he, he talked to me. I was sitting, I am uh, standing in the corner. He said, uh, where are you coming from? I said, uh, because that time I don't know much English. I cannot understand. So I told him, Angreji nahi aata hai. Toh he knows Hindi. So, uh, the Girivardari, he understood Hindi. Padmulachan also, he knows Hindi. So then they told me, Aapke, aap kaha se aaya hai? I am Nepal. Okay. So uh, they told me then after the Arati, they take me in the Prasadam Hall. Uh, one o'clock at that time, big fish prasadam, Prabhupada time, the best prasadam that time. Big, very wonderful, nice uh, apple chutney, everything. But now there's no apple chutney this time. But Prabhupada time, always apple chutney, chutney was the best. Uh, everything was so nice prasad, very wonderful. So I like. So they give me nice prasad, they feed me. Then, and after they, they take me to Akshayananda Maharaj's room, president. So he said that he is wife from Nepal. Maharaj, uh, then because uh, there's no Indian devotee here at that time. Uh, uh, so, then um, Akshan Maharaj told, okay, you stay here. Uh, we'll give you everything. Uh, you um, will, uh, uh, because, uh, you know, the serving Krishna is more important. He, he speaks to me Hindi because Maharaj that time, he likes uh, Indian devotee. Parashanath Mahaprabhu, he is also was here that time. So uh, then I say, okay, then Maharaj uh, Akshayana Swami immediately Barbar was sitting next to guest house, that tree. Uh, then uh, he told, um, uh, Akshayana Maharaj told his servant, so take this boy, the shave is his head. So then they shave my head, and then he, uh, that time, uh, uh, Tampa commander Hariswari Prabhuji. So then he told to Hariswari, then he, uh, Hari, he take me Hariswari Prabhuji's room, then Hariswari Prabhu teach me how to put dhoti, how to put uh, the tilak, everything. He kept me in his room for 10, 15 days. So he trained me up, Hariswari Prabhuji. So um, he was a temple commander that time. So he teach me then that time I was cleaning the temple. Three times I'm cleaning, morning, early morning, um, uh, temple cleaning, then afternoon, um, uh, then evening also. At that time, no, no, uh, no, any sweeper is coming, uh, clean, no worker cleaning, only new bhakta is cleaning. Myself, uh, one is Vaishnava Dharma from uh, uh, Spain. So here we are both are clean the temple morning, you know, our duty is uh, only clean the temple, uh, this temple, squeeze, uh, clean, clean everything. So then, <coughs> then after the uh, temple open in coming uh, nearby and uh, April, for Ramnami time, so many devotees, they came from Mayapur and Prabhupada also came from Mayapur along with the big groups here. Then Prabhupada go every day in morning walk, 6.30. Uh, then after he comes and here in the temple, uh, circulate, circulated Parikarma. So then um, <clears throat> along with many sannyasi, along with him, Hansa Dutta, uh, so many other sannyasi is there. Um, so along uh, Mahara, Akshayananda Maharaj. So uh, then Prabhupada walking and talking. There was now TV, TV sanction is going on, you know, this uh, here. So that's one, the tree is there, um, uh, Tamal trees. So uh, Prabhupada, that tree was very small. Then Prabhupada stayed there on a stick. Then Prabhupada said, Krishna likes our yogurt. He's stealing the butter. He distributed monkey. Uh, Balaram like honey, uh, he become instaticated. So like that, like that, this all, this uh, <coughs> all Vindavan, all the trees, all the, all the servant of Krishna, he's talking something of Krishna Leela, Prabhupada. But that time I don't know the much English, but somehow other because Dhananjaya Prabhu, everybody, uh, Panchadrabhada Maharaj, they are because I'm new. They, they love me very much. So they putting me ahead, ahead. So I am going ahead, ahead. I'm near to next to Prabhupada. Then I told Prabhupada, I also like the yogurt. Then Prabhupada just looked at me like this. Uh, then uh, Prabhupada said, Where this boy is from? Then Akshayana Maharaj told, He's from Nepal. Oh, he's from Nepal? Really? He looks like European. I thought he's from part of some part of Europe. Prabhupada said, then everybody laughed. Then, <clears throat> then, uh, then uh, the devotees tell, okay, Prabhupada said, you like yogurt? I say, yes. Okay, your name is Dadi Bhaksa Das. So, 
then everybody say hari bol hari bol like that then um, uh, then uh, somebody asked devotee asked prabhupada what is mean dadi baksha das you don't know dadi baksha dadi means sanskrit baksha means eater krishna one who likes to eat yogurt das means servant so that name i have got from that tree here nearby and then now the uh, telecast going on the same place that place i get the name from parupad the first meeting there parupad then parupad say acha this you are from nepal i say yes then parupad say okay <clears throat> he tell everybody oh this nepali boy with others uh, very nice so because nepal is hindu country parupad say hindu country even now also he say parupad say uh, this no any part of world uh, king, uh, king is running the country but nepal is kingdom hindu country and king is uh, only king is ruling the country the nepal all the hindu is very uh, pious people is there uh, very nice okay you take care this boy parupad say then <clears throat> then after uh after maybe uh, five six day after that uh, uh initiation ceremony is going on in the courtyard i have also photo with the uh, like bhakti vikas maharaj uh, books also my our, our initiation photo is there or uh, is uh, uh, hari swari prabhu is a uh, hind uh, books also our photo is there initiation so um, then <clears throat> after one week the initiation ceremony is going on akshay and maharaj put my name in the list then my turn come then prabhupada say uh, my hindi he told me char name kya hai bataiye to maine bata diya i told for the principal because already i practiced it so um, <clears throat> then prabhupada say i have already given your name that time dadi bakshadas that name will continue chant 60 round and do seva here this temple nicely okay i say okay then onward from that time i was doing seva then after two month after because very hot season is going on very very hot here they all the western devotee cannot stay mostly because visa problem that time you know they because they always go and western country so because that time my head pujari is omkara prabhu is from france so uh, he have no pujari nothing he always complain akshayana the swami there is no pujari so then <coughs> akshan swami he t- introduced me for prabhupad that this boy wants to have a brahman initiation so then he can do the puja then prabhupad say okay no problem then uh, prabhupad call me in the prabhupad house that time harishwari prabhu was prabhupad uh, secretary so then uh, where prabhupad was sitting there up that time uh, afternoon time so he they call uh, prabhupad call me he say uh, i have brahman thread before and my uh, <coughs> my house already because um, age of 8 or 9 years so we childhood we uh, family uh, nish, uh, brahman thread uh, already we put for the our our our, our hindu culture so i have already brahman thread then prabhupad show me my brahman thread he say aapke paas to brahman thread hai ki aap brahman hai uh, yes to then uh, prabhupad say आपका गायत्री बताइए देन आई टोल माई गायत्री प्रपा से दिस इज योर दैमिकट गायत्री सो आई विल गिव यू यू वैष्णव गायत्री ऑल द वैष्णव गायत्री गुरु गायत्री आई विल गिव इट यू आई से ओके प्रभुपा नो प्रॉब्लम बट देन प्रभुपा टेक माई ब्राह्मण थ्रेड वे फ्रॉम माई नेक देन ही थ्रो इन दैट गार्बेज देन ही जस्ट थ्रो इन द गार्बेज यू नो देन आई वॉज जस्ट हियर हरीश्वरी वॉज ऑल्सो देयर then parupat told me come to next to me he say then i get to next to parupat there and then parupat started accounting the finger um ginti then he he, he spoke to my ear and the gayatri mantra three four times then after then he told harishwari prabhu teach this boy nicely and give him the paper so then um, after the harishwari prabhu he also teach me uh, how to you know ch- account the finger uh, chant gayatri so then after two days uh, i become pujari of this temple so i was a pujari here so then uh, that time of prabhu pad um, you know disappearance also i am here we are uh, everybody have the um, you know the we have a small kirtan was going on that time because my turn with the along with the hansaduta uh, maharaj so we have a small kartal who do kirtan even the night also temple commander come and wake us we have one hour two hour our duty is there parupat quarter so we do kirtan 
for uh, different devotee have a different timing slowly slowly so my other with the hansudta prabhu maharaj so he is also my good friend uh, so um, <clears throat> so that time we do kirtan then for participants i am here so i uh, i have a photo along with the parupa we play i play mardanga with the uh, um um uh, nitai chan prabhu from mayapur uh, myself or uh, krishnadas baba ji we play the mardanga or uh, narayan maharaj leading the kirtans all night and uh, uh, you know the position also morning also all night is singing vishnu bhajan so we are always cry cry for parupad we dig the samadhis here and then avidapati gustamai ye avidapati prabhu the abhi to maharaj ban gaye to he is also my good friend so that time he raat hal hal night he is cooking the the uh, sweet rice then after next day they distribute thousands of thousands of people here crowded they distributed sweet rice big feast everybody after prabhupad samadhi were done so uh, <clears throat> then um, because uh, now i want to tell uh, some magic also which is prabhupad he had uh, uh, to give me so by that time 76 uh, like uh, prabhavishnu or mahavishnu maharaj they are a library party through over the india they go you know kanyakumari to kashmir their um, you know library party so they um, uh, set all the books uh, uh, keep in the college university like that order so then one day they came here bindavan um, then parupat they want parupat quarter parupat house they say parupat told you you went to nepal they say yeah we go nepal but we don't have the any um, we, we cannot speak nepal because nepal is a very poor country very difficult to uh, maintain there uh, we can uh, because nepali people can understand english so we uh, can uh, speak uh, uh, nepali so like that then purpose okay i have one nepali boy here pujari so sometime you should take him along with him along with to then he can go then then uh, mahavishnu maharaj told me ye ba usme maharaj brahmachari the dono to ne se kal parupat kal kal into you in parupat quarter i was there the temple so i went parupat quarter parupat se sometime uh, he told me the hindi aap mahavishnu ke sath aap jaiye nepal mein kyunki aap nepali bhasha aapka desh hai to aap unke sath thoda madad kariye fir baad mein aap aapis aa sakte hai to then i went there in kathmandu along with them so we preach and six month we open the center there on kathmandu uh, then uh, you know the gaushala near the pasupati uh, we rent the house uh, then i did all kirtan every door to door book distribution then mahavishnu they are doing kirtan so they announcing then i uh, nepali language i speaking to then after because nepal get very cold i don't like very cold also then i come back to an in india bindavan again so i am here so then <clears throat> and uh, after that i never went to nepal so this year what happened because uh, uh jay patak maharaj disciples here Go- bindavan gopinath prabhu is here uh, uh or mahavishnu maharaj disciple uh, akinchana devidasi they are here and they have purchased house here near uh, hospice hospital so they are stayed then one day um, june i think june and july uh, in, uh, um Uh, middle of july one day uh, this uh, mahavishnu maharaj came uh, to meet to them only one night he came the next day early morning he, he gone then i was chanting in the lobby myself and here then uh, mahavishnu came maharaj came from down from the guest house to lobby then he show me he just came to me we pay the obeisance and everything then he telling me are dadi bhaksha prabhu uh, i am foreigner i am a videshi or i am original secretary of the nepal but you are nepali only one parupa disciple whole country there nobody other parupa disciple so you should come and see new generation give them blessings why you are not coming i say maharaj i like to come there no problem but nobody come calling to me how to, how do i come he say oh, is it like that i say yes okay i am calling you this year for janmashtami and chief guest so i will be also there you have to come I say okay. If you call me, I'll definitely come. Then <clears throat> he say, "How should I contact you? Give me your any contact number." I say, "My I give my card." Then Maharaj give him the that card to the Kathmandu president. 
then president they have phone me he sent me the letter he say prabhu ji maharaj is uh, inviting you for the chief guest we already pend uh, all the you know the already to your publicity that you are only one prabhu participant of our all country this is your home you have to come to here and give them blessings all the new generation and here on janmashtami day so <clears throat> so tam program will be about 12 days so you come then i say um, okay. then they sh- they sh- will send you ticket from kathmandu to here um, delhi delhi to kathmandu by flight so all taxi fare everything will give in to you so you please come then they make my arrangement and i went there so then eight days the program was there on pandal one and a half uh, day one and a half hour every day i am speaking in nepali language and the pandal everybody like all new generation so they then they allow me to distribute the price for all this uh, vip up there then they also give me the avoid a uh, lifetime of achie- uh, achievement from uh, kathmandu iskon to me so you know they um, to maharaj this is all parupad mercy upon to me so because i am only one parupad disciple in nepal there is nothing other other one so parupad maybe wants to me to peace all the mountains because i already peace through of the india only cities towns like bombay all the baroda surat i was president surat i was president of pune i opened the center there 80 82 83 84 i was uh, yet um, yet in nine and at the uh, 34 years i was president of surat also so i was um, Sur- um, baroda also i collect every every everywhere through of the india for uh, the for uh, life membership collection when parupad was samadhi was uh, constructing here so they said that time bombay they said parupad disciple collection should be come to the samadhi mandir so that time going on so mandaba prabhu the president bombay so all my collection for two years he they send in the parupad samadhi in bindavan so i did all the sevas so <clears throat> now because mountains nobody going for pitch everybody pitching the downtown everywhere so i am from mountain in the hill the hill, hill station the people there are all the demigod devotees not krishna devotees because they don't know what is meaning of krishna they don't have any krishna temple in the hill so maybe prabhupad will allow me to go all the different places he want to increase my service to peach and different uh, part of uh, you know nepal and downtown and the hill station i like because hill i like very much hill station because uh, you know downtown everybody enjoy but hill nobody go because i i am from mountains because walking distance here there. now I mean, hill also there are so many other road is going on light is going on everything now hill also become like a, a city town so everywhere so uh, i pray to prabhupad this is special occasion so give me the opportunity so let me uh, uh, go and preach and uh, that way because india i already i preach so much i preach bindavan also when i was here and krishna balram there is now in maharaj is already out of iskon but that time brahmachari so we have i am also uh, uh, 77 we are uh, also uh, collecting for bindavan i was a um, huge membership i go with him we do both are one team so we go collect at different places kanpur lucknow all the different area so we also collect for bindavan temple so i already did for well, our beginning is my house in bindavan actually my spiritual house so i am here this place so prabhupad also give me the place to stay here so this prabhupad mercy whenever <clears throat> any difficulty come parupad is helping me supporting me all the because of mercy of parupad my son also become uh, uh, his grandson also my son he is also devotee uh, both nishesh and jay patak maharaj he is also brahmachari bombay he is also responsibility you know purchasing department taking care everything guru gaur krishna my uh, son illa they are all Uh, iskon devotee they are also initiated by iskon gurus jay pataka maharaj radha govind maharaj my all children they are devotee because i told them them become a devotee not in the karmi that's why i don't send them in the karmi college and girl also my daughter also i send them only the girl college so now they are all everybody chanting my uh, elder daughter now is a, a teacher of bhakti vedanta school and the bombay also so like that so now i am bani prastha i retire i everything i am uh, so i am free all for all the this 
material entanglement. I, I want at least uh, mercy of Prabhupada. I am here and this Dhanadhan Maharaj, he is always taking care of me nicely, talking to me. I am very happy, Panjagoda Prabhu. Here nice uh, management department, just like very wonderful, very sweet devotee. They respect me eh, more than the gurus like that. I am very happy and this place also. I have no problem. So I am now beginning also Brijabasi, in the also Brijabasi. I want to join, I joined Bindavan, so I want to end my life in Bindavan. That is my, uh, my, uh, my desire. So I want to pray to Prabhupada, fulfill my desire, then um, let's see what happens. Jagat Guru Shri Prabhupada Ki! Shri Prabhupada Ki! Shri Prabhupada Tiruva Maha Mahasav Ki! Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you, Dadi Baksha Prabhu, for a wonderful offering to Srila Prabhupada and your description how you become a devotee and get Srila Prabhupada's mercy. By the way, this is in uh, FM 102, 102.1 FM. So now I would like to uh, request Shudi Prabhu to please come and do your offering. <laughs> Hare Krishna. It's on, you can hear this? Raise your hand if you can hear me. Raise your hand if you're not here today. Oh, no, you must be here. I'm just making sure. So it's on the radio, too. Um, who heard me speak the other night in Prabhupada's house? Anybody here for that? I told a few stories. You know, I was thinking that during the time in Mumbai, when I was there with Prabhupada in 1971, we thought that if Prabhupada left, that we would not be able to carry on because devotees were new and devotees were inexperienced and sometimes devotees would fight and so we didn't see how without Prabhupada that we could carry on because when things got difficult Prabhupada always had the answers we were in Nairobi and these two girls came they'd run away from home in Bombay and they showed up in Nairobi and they wanted to stay at the temple and then some of the Indian life members were upset. They said the parents had called them and they have to send them back. So Brahmananda called Prabhupada up and Prabhupada says, yes, I've already sent a letter explaining what to do about that. I said, but we haven't asked the question yet. But Prabhupada said, yes, but I knew it was coming so I sent the letter about what, what to do and that he explained how to, how to handle the situation that would have the girls come to the temple but they wouldn't live in the temple and it was a very nice way to um, alleviate the situation but I was thinking when Prabhupada left us you know when I'm reading the 13th chapter of the 10th canto of Bhagavatam it's amazing this is the last part that Sri the Prabhupada translated and yet it is as clear as anything else that Prabhupada translated. And what's kind of a shock is especially when you're reading it in the Kindle, it doesn't switch, it just all of a sudden it goes to the 14th chapter and then it's saying, as Srila Prabhupada says in his, in his Krishna book or in that, you're going, wait a minute, wow. And you realize that this is done by the disciples of Prabhupada, but it's kind of a shock to go from one minute there's commentaries by Prabhupada and the next by his disciples. And yet the commentaries are still quite good. And kind of like in that chapter, that Brahma stole all the cows and the cowherd boys. So they were all gone. They were missing. So the residents of Vrindavan are going to have to lament because their children are gone. But Krishna manifest himself as all these cows and cowherd boys and went back and the village people and the cows were satisfied. In the same way, 
we were wrong about thinking how we wouldn't be able to go on after Prabhupada because so many of my god brothers are not like me they're actually good devotees and they're so dedicated and surrendered to Srila Prabhupada's mission that Srila Prabhupada has expanded his potencies in these devotees and in his books and therefore he appears to us just like Krishna expanded in the cowherd boys and they went back to the people the Prabhupada has expanded in his books he's expanded in his representatives his devotees who preach his mission so in this way we find that Srila Prabhupada is still there it's like it was being discussed today that when I used to go to bed at night in Mumbai I would hear Prabhupada translating in the next room but I couldn't hear all of it and in the morning when I'd wake up I'd go in the kitchen to prepare things and I'd hear Prabhupada translating the seventh canto again but I only heard bits and pieces so now that Prabhupada's gone I can't get any of that seventh canto is that correct? is it? who says yes? who says no? I can get it where do I get it? it's in something it, it, remind, it rhymes with look and it begins with B what is it? come on you can't miss that what rhymes with look and begins with B? book so if Prabhupada had translated these books and put purports to them we would still have contact with him is that true did he do that yes to all the cantos of Bhagavatam no only up to 13th chapter of the 10th canto but his representatives translated beyond that and there's quite a lot of pages to read someone was saying that well we read other books because Prabhupada gave us so little but start to add up some of the pages let's see there's about 1100 in the Gita and there's about 800 and something in the Krishna book so that's about 2000 there's about 15,000 when you include 11th and 12th so that's 17,000 there's about 7200 in the Chaitanya Charitamrita so that's 24,000 and something and there's another 400 in Nectar of Devotion and we have Ishopanishad and teachings of Queen Kunti and other things is that quite a lot? that's how many pages? about 25,000 pages right? so if you read um, 25 pages a day it would take you three years to finish it all I've been the last few years since 2010 I would read for my mother and my mother got to do service for Prabhupada because she was an attorney for 64 years and whenever we had trouble with the police in Laguna she would come to the temple and tell the police to leave the poor Krishna devotees alone and I saw her once make the chief of police stutter and say well actually ma'am I only came because we were called it and she was just reading him the riot act as they say in America and so they left us alone so when it came time to write the book trust <clears throat> Prabhupada asked if there was any people who were good attorneys Prabhupada wanted to have all the things legally documented properly you know it shows that it's better to do our own duty even to do another person's duty this shows in many things that we do so we think well we know a little bit of law we can write our own trust right Prabhupada was a college graduate he could just write it himself did he need an attorney so he asked for an attorney and they asked my mother and my mother talked with him and then sent him a document and he wrote questions on the things and so my mother went back and met with him to discuss the different things and she said even though she had clients that owned the whole city of Placentia about a hundred thousand people and the private community of Emerald Bay which is right on the beach in Laguna all this is this isn't like drunk driving or petty 
cases. This is people that have big trusts and big legal issues to secure. And she said that Prabhupada understood um, what she had done more than any other clients, and he explained exactly what he wanted more than any other clients. And he was very clear, and he understood why a trust is better than um, having just a corporation. Because in a corporation, the executives are not responsible. In a trust, if something goes wrong, it's the trustee's fault. They have to take care of it. And there are safeguards in there for the, the trust itself that they have to go by what the orig originator of the trust said. And so we have to understand these things. It's amazing how later on people came to me and they said, well, don't you think we should close the Bhaktivedanta Book Trust and just open up something else? I said, it's called the Bhaktivedanta Irrevocable Book Trust. What part of irrevocable don't you understand? How do you revoke something that's irrevocable? You know how? You don't. It's written that way because quite often there's other people who want to do this. Just like when parents write a will, some of the children may want to revoke it and make it all to their advantage. But it was set up so that it could not be changed. So what was interesting too is my mother then came to Mumbai after she had done this for Prabhupada. And I said, did you ask Prabhupada who your son was? And she says, yes, I asked Prabhupada, do you know who my son is? And Prabhupada says, yes, he's the young brahmachari in Mumbai. Because <clears throat> I was 18 years old, but I looked about 12. Prabhupada told the older devotees, you must take care of him, he is a young boy. And we were all so young then. I remember when someone said, did you hear what happened to Tamal Krishna? I said, no. He said, he turned 24 years old. And we went, wow. And Shaima Shindra says, that's nothing. I'm 30. Went, 30? Whoa, this is really old. That 30 was like old. You now have children that are 39 and 42, right? But we thought 30 was old then. So this was Prabhupada and a bunch of children. They called them boys and girls because they were boys and girls. The old ones were 30 years old. And the young ones were 24 and younger. And Prabhupada built a movement on the people like this who were just young children. And it was so amazing what Prabhupada did. You see in the films that he's there just chanting with the hippies in the park and getting them involved. That when Prabhupada came to Mumbai, it was interesting because he was translating books and he would go on walks and he would preach at different people's houses. This is before we even had the um, Akash Ganga building. I'll think of a few things that happened that I didn't tell about when I lectured the other night. Um, when the war was going on, um, finally when the war had ended, the leader of Pakistan kept telling his people they were winning, they were winning, until the Indian soldiers invaded the capital city of Karachi. And then it was obvious they weren't winning anymore, wasn't it? If the Indian soldiers are in the main city, they're not winning. So then the, the Pakistani leader disappeared and Prabhupada's walking with his cane. And he said, so what has become of Yaya Khan? And Prabhupada said, I think they have killed him. Just made him disappear. And it was funny, while the war was going on, as I told the other night, the one time I'm doing the Arctic and the bombs were dropping near us and I could see the tracer bullets shooting at the planes and I was in so much anxiety. That's when I went into Prabhupada's room after the Arctic and he stopped the others and he looked up at me and he said, so everything is all right? And just like that, the anxiety went away. Because if the bombs are dropping near you, it's kind of a big anxiety. It's not the kind of thing you get used to. It's not like these firecrackers, you can go back to sleep while it's going on. This, this, was, a, this was a real tragedy. But at least I got to serve Prabhupada there instead of having to fight in Vietnam.
because I was in South Africa opening a temple and they wanted me to come and join the army and fight in Vietnam. <clears throat> but my mother actually did the legal work to get me ministerial deferment because I was the only devotee in South Africa and there were many people who could have gone to fight in Vietnam and South Africa ended up being a successful temple and Vietnam was just a fiasco that America lost anyway. So I think I could have done more good in South Africa than in Vietnam because America lost anyway. So I'm glad I didn't have to fight that war. But um, so a little bit after we'd been bombed, we went on a ride with Sri the Prabhupada and stopped to do a walk. <clears throat> and we picked up a couple of newspapers to see what had been bombed the night before, what Pakistan had planned for India. So Prabhupada is looking at one newspaper and I'm looking at another. And Prabhupada says, can, I'm sitting next to him, he says, can we trade newspapers? I said, yes, Srila Prabhupada. He says, no, no, when you are finished. I said, no, you can have it now, Srila Prabhupada. And so I gave it <coughs> to Srila Prabhupada. And it's funny, I, in Czechoslovakia, the name for God is Krashna. And we were riding in the car, and I was telling the other devotee in the back seat, and Prabhupada in the front seat, he says, what, what did you say? I said, Prabhupada in Czechoslovakia, the name for God is Krashna. Prabhupada says, then we should go there and start a temple there. So Prabhupada was always enthusiastic to go on with the preaching, but he'd act so matter of fact, even though he was a spiritual master of the whole movement. Another morning walk, we went to the Hanging Gardens, and <clears throat> we were walking around this field, and some impersonal swamis asked, do you want to come to our ashram? It's at the other side of the gardens. And we said, Prabhupada, if you want to go, and Prabhupada says, not like that. If we all want to go, we'll go. Otherwise, we won't. And I thought, you know, I'm 18, and he's 80, and he's asking us kids. And we said, well, why not? Let's go. So we went there. And even though I'm from America, I'd come from France, because, as I said, in Paris, France, I was there, and we had no heat and no electricity, and it was freezing cold, and people would throw things at us on the street. And I said, Krishna, I'll make you a deal. If you get me out of this cold, I promise never to complain about heat, ever. And three days later, a letter came from Prabhupada <coughs> saying, please send three devotees to India. So I got on a plane, and it was still snowing, and I got off and it was over 30 degrees, which isn't all that hot, but it is if you started your journey in the snow. But I reminded myself that I'd promised Krishna I wouldn't complain about heat, and so I didn't. But it also reminds me to be careful what you pray for, you might get it. Like a brahmacharya is thinking, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I had that woman? Um, and then sure enough, Krishna will send that one along or something like that. So we have to be careful what we pray for. And thoughts are like prayers too. When we're thinking, oh, wouldn't it be nice if I had this? It's almost the same as praying, please Krishna, send this to me. So we have to be careful what we're wishing for because we might get it. Now fortunately, I got to be there with Prabhupada, but I was wishing to be out of cold and so I was out of cold in the extreme heat. And yet, we landed in Delhi and people crowded around us by the thousands because they'd seen Westerners and they'd seen brahmacharis. But to see three Western brahmacharis, this was a shock. Especially when we took the train through Rajasthan. People would come running to the window to see what was going on. They'd never seen this before. So we got to go and be with Prabhupada and I got initiated by Prabhupada at the Cross Maidan Festival. We didn't even have Juhu yet. We were planning to have a temple somewhere. And one day, Tushta Krishna came back and said, this one Mr. Nair wants to give a piece of land. 
he wanted to give it, but then he wanted something to be paid off, some kind of tricky thing. But it's funny, later Prabhupada told him, don't give them the money until you get the deed. That seems like a simple instruction to follow. And yet, he said, but if you give me the money sooner, then I'll, if you give me the money now, I'll sell you the property for less money. Right? Does that sound good? Right? Like, you know, the Keshav Kunj across the street? If you give me one lakh of rupees now, I, I will sell it to you for one lakh of rupees if you don't ask for the deed now. Does that sound good? But I'm selling it to you for a lakh of rupees. But the trouble is, if I don't give you the deed, it's not worth anything. But it, it turns out that a verbal contract is actually binding, but it takes time to prove that. So they had to prove that in court. <clears throat> so we have to try to remember in our service that sometimes things could be fixed later, but it's much better if we try to fix things in the beginning and not get into trouble. And I was amazed <clears throat> how interested Prabhupada was in taking care of us, just like Pushta Krishna Swami had said that um, how much interested Prabhupada was in taking care of me when I was alone in South Africa because I had written to him that I'm alone and so I was there with Rishi Kumar Swami and one day he's gone and I find a note it says dear Shudi decided to split so I look at the bottom of the page there's nothing I turn the page over there's nothing there I look for the other page there's nothing else I'm thinking this is my explanation that I decided to leave just like that not when, where, why and he took money with him and my parents had bought a car, and that car was gone. A couple of days later, a man brought it back and says, oh, he asked me to bring it back to you after a couple of days, because I guess he wanted to get away before I could find out. But I'd written to Prabhupada what had happened exactly. So Prabhupada said, I'm praying. When I opened the letter, I thought maybe I'm in trouble for making so many decisions, but there was no one to ask. I would have even asked neighbors if I'd had neighbors. <coughs> But there was nobody within like five kilometers and no devotees for 4,000 kilometers. So I had to just make decisions on what I was going to do because there was no one to ask. So when the letter came back and I thought I'm in trouble and I opened the top and I could see it says, I'm very much pleased. I thought, well, this is my ticket. The rest of it has to be good after that, doesn't it? He can't say, I'm very much pleased, but I'm... So it said, I'm very much pleased at the responsibility you've taken to spread Krishna consciousness in South Africa at such a young age. <clears throat> and he said, just like Arnarda... You were left alone just like Arnarda Muni. And he became one of the greatest devotees. He said, so somehow or other you were left alone by Krishna's arrangement. He said, I am praying to Krishna that you will have the strength and enthusiasm to carry out this mission. <clears throat> so that's the point of this. I wasn't some great sannyasi or a surrendered soul like the others, but because Prabhupada prayed to Krishna that I would have the strength and enthusiasm to carry out this mission, it happened because <clears throat> I could have been in trouble there because the white government didn't like me because I was mixing with other races, so they were threatening my life. The Africans were 80%. And I'm living alone as a white person. White people were killing them like anything. So they could have killed me just for being white. So it was a race to see who was going to kill me first. But yet somehow or other, Krishna saved my life and was able to get the seed planted for the movement to go on. But very soon after that, Bra Brahmananda said that Prabhupada had asked him, since I was alone, to come down and help me out. <clears throat> and so he wrote a letter from Nairobi, Kenya, saying he was leaving with some of the devotees and they were going to do a, a safari down the African countries and meet me. So the next letter came from Mombasa, which is closer on the coast of Africa, and then he was the next place down, Dar es Salaam, Tanzania, and then he was in Malalwe, and then he was in Rhodesia saying, I'll be there in a couple days. And then I didn't see him. And then I got a letter that because he had devotees from other African countries, <clears throat>
the white government wouldn't let him in the country. And they stamped in his passport that he was never to be allowed in South Africa again. <clears throat> so there I was still alone. So Prabhupada asked the one boy in San Diego, Duradarshan, to come help me out. I mean, Duradarshan means hard to find. So Duradarshan came and spent a few weeks, and then all of a sudden he was Duradarshan. He was missing too, he was gone. But at least he told me he was going. So then after that, so Brahmananda wasn't able to come. <clears throat> And Prabhupada asked others, Guru Kripa and Yasoda Nandan were considering to come and help because Prabhupada was asking someone to come help me. And <clears throat> um, after Duradarshan had left, then Prabhupada asked Pushta Krishna to come. So Pushta Krishna told me he was raising money and was going to come. And <clears throat> when I left Durban to go to city south of me, does it say? Oh, okay. There's some people who wish to speak, right? Yes? Okay. We'll stop there and let someone else speak. Oh, okay. So, I went to these cities of East London and Port Elizabeth. And East London was a small town, but I sold sets of books to every single Indian business there. So I made a bunch of money in a day and a half. And then I went to Port Elizabeth for five days and sold a bunch of books there. Made a huge amount of money. So when I came back to Durban, the security police came and caught me. And they were Indian police. They took me to meet the white ones who were real tough. And they said, let's get your passport. So I took the visa. It was on a separate piece of paper like this. So I took it out of the passport and hid it. So this was a Friday. They said, where's your visa? I said, oh, it must be with my things that are coming on Monday. So I said, we'll be back on Monday. So I knew on Monday I would be in trouble. So I... <clears throat> I went to my friend's house. He says, I got a phone. You need to call anywhere? I said, yes, I need to call Brahmananda in Nairobi, Pushta Krishna in, in London, and my mother in America. So I called Pushta Krishna in London, says, you got to get here tomorrow. He says, I only have money for myself, but not my assistant. I said, I'll send them uh, extra money. You need to get here tomorrow. And I told Brahmananda what was happening. And I told my mother to pay a ticket for me and then I wired enough money to pay for all the books. <clears throat> I had $15,000 book debt, but I paid it all and left $4,500 worth of books all paid for and a car for Pushta Krishna Swami. And he showed up on Saturday. And Monday I went in, the security police questioned me and I had a ticket for the next day. So they decided to put me on a plane instead of put me in a jail. <clears throat> But Prabhupada was so concerned that I was there alone. And he prayed to Krishna that I would have the strength and enthusiasm to carry out this mission. And whenever I go back to Africa or somewhere to preach, I try to say what I told Prabhupada when I was there for the cornerstone laying in Mayapur. <clears throat> Before I went to Africa, I went into Prabhupada's quarters, which of course was the little thatched hut in Mayapur. I don't know if you can call that quarters. It's just a thatched hut. But... Um, should we call it the International Offices for the Society of Krishna Consciousness? Whatever we called it was a thatched hut. <clears throat> so I said, Prabhupada, I'm going to Africa now. And I hope this gives me an opportunity to increase my service to you. And Prabhupada put both his hands behind his head and he said, Service to Lord Chaitanya, service to Lord Chaitanya, service to Lord Chaitanya, as if offering my service to Lord Chaitanya, even though I haven't done it yet. So please, Srila Prabhupada, continue to pray to Krishna that I will have the strength and enthusiasm to serve you and um, offer my service to, to Lord Chaitanya and help me to increase my service to you. Thank you, Srila Prabhupada. Thank you, Shudi Prabhu, for your wonderful offering to Srila Prabhupada. I'd like to request uh, a devotee here. Um, his name is very special. 
His name is Rata Yatra Das Prabhu. Prabhupada gave him a name, Rata Yatra Das. So many of the Rata Yatras in North America, you'll see him attending. Last time I saw him, it was in Toronto. You were in Toronto, Rata Yatra? Thank you, Maharaj. I was born in the darkness of ignorance, and my spiritual master opened my eyes with the torchlights of knowledge. Thank you, Srila Prabhupada. Um, I have a bad cold, so my story will be short. And I cannot compare myself to my God brothers before me. Amazing service. Um, I just flew in from Seoul, South Korea. I was distributing books there. It's one of my favorite countries to distribute books. The people are very kind. And I just show them a book, and I know one word of Korean. Kibu which means donation. And they go, kibu? I go, kibu. And they automatically give. So it's very sweet there. And I like distributing the original Bhagavad Gita's, the pocket size ones, because it's so small, I can carry a lot of them. But I have a head cold and I have an ear infection, so when I speak, my head starts throbbing. So I'll give you one short story of some real nectar prop an association I had. So yes, uh, I was, I joined in Chicago in 1974, again, as a teenager, very young. I found a BTG on my doorstep in um, the neighboring state called Wisconsin. And from the BTG, I read it, and this is what I was looking for. And in the back of the BTG is a temple address. So after Krishna took away all my material things, I was in a rock band and um, long hair, doing drugs. And I just put my thumb out on the road. That's so what we did those days. We just traveled with our thumb. And so I hitchhiked to Chicago. And my first time seeing devotees in orange and shaved heads, I go, wow, this is cool. And I walk into the temple. It was a Sunday feast. And after the Sunday feast, the temple president took me to his office and read three Bhagavad Gita verses to me. And I surrendered that night, and they shaved me up. And what's very interesting today, that temple president, Sri Govinda Das, was here today. The first time I seen him in 40 years. of such an amazing connection, Prabhupada. You know, it's a see, see the temple president. Because I had contacted him a couple of years ago just to thank him. Because he was very instrumental for me becoming a devotee. Because he took care of me right away. He saw I was a young man and uh, preached to me. And I, uh, I just went for it. And to see him here today was so special. Because I, I contacted him a couple of years ago in London where he, he took sinyas. And I just want to say before we die, I want to thank you. And somehow he was here today. And we talked and we're going to meet next year and do some service together. So it's very nice. So i tell you one part of my nectar, my association with Prabhupada. As I'm starting, I'll get fuzzy up here. Um, okay, I joined in Chicago in 74. This is when the books were printed and they were being distributed around the world. I mean, my first experience was going to O'Hare Airport, which is this big airport. And I was taken by Tripurari Swami, who was this very famous book distributor. So my very first day, I was trained up by Tripurari. And I've been distributing books ever since. And so I was in Chicago for a couple of years, distributing books. And we just did books like BTGs by the thousands. I mean, we went out to street corners 12 hours a day. Every car would get one in the window. And we have a can, we shake the coins. You know, everybody throws something in. And we did the big books at the airport. And then um, Sri Gobinda got a call from Detroit. Govardhan Das was a president. And Ambarish just purchased a the temple there. This big mansion called the Fisher Mansion. And they needed some Sankirtan devotees. So um, uh, Rath Yatra come in the office. We're going to send you to Detroit. And this is where I got to, I met Prabhupada my first time in Chicago, but there were so many devotees, Radha Damodar, and I never really got any good association. But in Detroit, when I arrived, there's just a few devotees, and um, guess who shows up? Satsarup Goswami and Prabhupada. 
And Prabhupada was very happy to see this beautiful mansion. I mean, we lived like kings. We had gardens, we had uh, peacocks, we had a river, and we, we, had, uh, we were eating prasadam on floors that would cost as much as a house across the street. They were all marble, and this is an exotic building. Uh, and so one day, it was after Prabhupada gave me my Brahmin initiation, and when he was giving me, I was alone with Prabhupada in the room when he gave me my initiation, but I could never speak to Prabhupada. I was just in awe because I knew he was the pure devotee of God. I knew this was God's representative. I was just in awe. I would just keep bowing down, giving obeisances. But Prabhupada was just giving me the mantra and talked to me about the four rags and 16 rounds. And then one day, Prabhupada was out in the garden by the river. He was like this. And I was fanning Prabhupada like this. And whenever I saw Prabhupada, he was always preaching or chanting. So in the garden, he was just chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna, Krishna. And he went into trance. He stopped. I could just see he went like this. So I kept fanning him. And while I was fanning him, waves of bliss were going through my body. Just wave after wave after wave. I never felt... Necessity, nothing like this. And I took a lot of drugs, believe me. Nothing was as good as this high. But it was just kept in wave after wave. I was going, whoa, whoa. I was just, I was just, whoa. And then Prabhupada just comes out of trance, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, and it stopped. But he was telling me that this is what I, you should try to achieve. This is love of God. This is what Prabhupada was in touch with. So I always remember that the rest of my life. And that's my story for tonight. Hare Krishna. <laughs> Thank you, Rata Yatra Prabhu. Uh, Hansarupa Prabhu would like to request him to please speak. And glorify Srila Mukam Karoti Vashalam, Haribo Puru, Pangom Langai de Grim, Yaki Pitaman Bande, Shigurum Diatan. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, 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 Hare Hare. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So, my name is Hung Sarupa Das. I joined in New York Temple, 1974. This was a Great time to become a Hare Krishna devotee. Many devotees joined in these years, 72, 76, that span. The Radha Damanar, uh, and actually, you could say Vishnu John Maharaj had quite a bit to do with that. He would be, uh, they had what was called the Transcendental Roadshow. And it, that was after Woodstock in 1969. If no one knows, Woodstock was a seminal moment in counterculture, a big rock festival. 
And the devotees were preaching there from New York, Toshan Krishna, Bori John. They have some interesting stories. I wish they were here to tell them. That was a, a very interesting preaching opportunity. But uh, a lot of devotees from that, from uh, that time period, including Bori John, Toshan Krishna, and uh, Vishnu John Maharaj, they had a bus it was a blue bus. And uh, that was the first bus in ISKCON that was traveling and preaching under the guidance of Vishnu John Maharaj. And he would travel all over. And uh, he would just make devotees. Vishnu John Maharaj is a very charismatic character. And we're speaking about him because Prabhupada's potency was invested in certain individuals. You know, we, we, we had that experience when we joined, that we were looking for something special. Uh, many of us weren't exactly sure what it was. But the, um, the opportunity to come to the temple after receiving an invitation, uh, at least in my experience afterward, was always a very... Uh, life-changing experience. When I first went to the Henry Street Temple, uh, Prabhupada wasn't there at this time. He had been there in April, and so now I'm coming at the end of the year, around this time, actually. And I didn't know what to expect. And I had followed the directions on the invitation card that the devotees passed out. I probably had it in my wallet for three or four years by that time. Always thinking that someday I'm going to go. I have to go. But different circumstances. When I finally got off the train and walked a few blocks, I had a strange feeling like I was about to meet my destiny. I don't know how to explain it otherwise. It, just, it was just a strange feeling. As I approached the building, at that time the temple was on Henry Street in Brooklyn. Henry and Kane, 439 Henry Street. Very special temple. The uh, ISKCON press was there. All the artists, all the books were being printed there, the small books. Like we used to see Lord Chaitanya in Five Features, Reservoir of Pleasure, Teachings of Prahlad. These were all excerpts from books that were being translated. And Bali Madan was very expert. And he would just, they would take the galley proofs and after they were finished they would bind them and we would distribute them. Uh, and of course the devotees got this nectar before the final publication as well. So that was one of the benefits there. But this temple, so I'm walking from the train station, and as I get within about a block, I sense this, and you know, of course, in those days it was it's sometimes difficult to try to appreciate uh, the reality from the sometimes alternate conscious-induced efforts that we had attempted half-heartedly. So when I got, you know, I could say, yeah, about it within a block, I felt this, I actually felt it like, an, like a vibration. And I, I wasn't someone who was following any of these sentimental yoga systems about auras and this and that. I just, I, I had no time for those things. And so I was very surprised that when I got close to this building, I, I felt this something, presence, like it wasn't a building of this material world. I mean, that was the feeling, that this was something that had descended from another universe. I didn't know what, how to describe it. And I met another person coming for the first time, and he was saying the same thing. He was saying, are you going to the Hare Krishna Center? Are you so? I said, yes. He said, is there something strange? It was like walking into a a different dimension. And I thought, how, how, 
is this person just pulling my leg? What is he? Maybe he was a plant or something. No. We walked into the temple and the, our senses were completely overwhelmed by the sights, the sounds, the smells. It was just, it was like nothing you'd ever experienced. You couldn't create this and this experience uh, artificially in any way. And, the, and, the, and, and the one thing was, as we'd approached, part of the vibration was this kirtan that we didn't know. I didn't know what, it, what uh, that, a kirtan like that was. I'd seen the devotees in the street, but this was times 10. The, the enthusiasm, the, the uh, sound, the vibration, the whole building was literally shaking. Literally shaking. You walked in, you felt the vibration. Like as if somebody had turned up some, you know, like an amplifier in a nightclub and you feel this vibration. But there was no amplification. It was just the devotees chanting <clears throat> and dancing. <clears throat> so that was my first experience at Henry Street. I, I didn't join that night. I took a Bhagavad Gita. I went home and I read the entire Gita in one sitting. I, just, I, I couldn't go to sleep. I, I was, uh, well, I was astounded. I was amazed, to say the least, that all these things, all these concepts that I'd considered over the years that I thought were just too, uh, you know, unbelievable, all of a sudden they're here in print. And I'm thinking, how is that possible? How is that possible that, you know, the nature of the soul, transmigration, Everything that I'd always wondered about here and answered completely in such a way that I, I felt I brew up. Look at that. So now I'm in a conundrum. I had always promised internally that if I ever found the truth, then I would consider that now I have to surrender it. And I didn't even know what the term surrender meant. But I knew that that was my life's goal. And so now all my questions have been answered. I had asked, I had been in so many philosophical different things uh, because I have an oriental background so I was into Zen, Buddhism and Taoism and martial arts and all these different things and now in the most unlikely place in the Hare Krishna temple I found what I was looking for so Krishna had to kick me a little bit and that's a different story but what I would been coming to the temple weekly to attend the Sunday feast, do service, but then I would go home. I would, we would stay late, we'd clean up. And I got to know all the devotees, and they were all very kind. And in those days, we had Jayadweta, Maharaj, Gopi Puranadana, Archita, uh, Srila Das, Romapada. I mean, and all these devotees are all preachers. They're all preachers. And you couldn't move without somebody trying to say, when are you going to surrender? That was the key word. When are you going to surrender? <laughs> Gaur Hari Prabhu, very sweet devotee, old de disciple of Srila Prabhupada. And he, he knew a little bit of my background. You know, we're coming from a rough neighborhood and he, he, he kind of, you know, figured that I, I was going to be a hard nut to crack. So he would specifically always corner me and say, you know, you know you have to surrender. You know, so what, what is it? What is it that's keeping you from surrendering? And I, I couldn't answer him. I didn't really know. But one devotee named Alankar, another old devotee, these are all devotees from 
Second Avenue or San Francisco. He said to me, because he cornered me, I was cleaning, we were waiting for Srila Prabhupada to come. And I was cleaning Srila Prabhupada's quarters. And Alankar was our, you know, supervisor, so to speak. And so he, he, he told me, he said, you know, you've been coming for some time. And Krishna is inviting you. But you're not taking it serious. So how long do you think he's going to keep on inviting you before he just stops? And I thought to myself, oh. Because we tend to think that Krishna is some faraway personality. That's our, my impersonalist, you know, background. But he put it exactly that Krishna is a person. And he is inviting you. And what are you doing? How are you reciprocating? And I was reading, but I, I just, to, up to that point, I was thinking, I could just wait some time. But then I thought, no, he's right. Actually, Krishna could stop. I could, because whatever I was getting, I wanted to keep. So I wanted the best of everything. I wanted the nectar, and it was nectar. But I didn't want to surrender. So then he put it correct. I, there, was, there were obligations. So then I thought, okay, Srila Prabhupada, this was the other thing we were speaking about the other day. We heard when Srila Prabhupada's coming. We know a few weeks in advance, Prabhupada's fixed up his date. Srila Prabhupada's coming. So I asked the Tamil president at that time, Gopi Janabalaba, a very sweet devotee, I'll never forget, like Jagannath was saying about Sri Govinda. No, these days, I don't know. Very, very personal. You know, he also knew my history. I'd been coming for m many months by that time. And I asked him, I said, Prabhu, Prabhat's coming. Can I stay? You know, over. I did so I didn't have to go back and forth, take the subway for an hour and a half and whatever. And he looked at me and said, he said, I'll, I'll do this for you. Because I was, I was not a, a bhakta. I was not even living in the temple. And they're, and they're expecting devotees from all over the East Coast, you know, to be packed into Henry Street Temple. It used to get so... And even when I would stay over, we were sleeping 30, 40 devotees in a room, maybe 15 by 15, just on the floor, head to toe, head to toe, toe to head. He said, okay, you can stay. You do the service. Because I, ha I had my service clean the pots all day long, and then clean the, the bathrooms. I said, yes, I'll, I'm happy. And I was also taking care of Prabhupada's room. I was the fix-it person. If there was something broken, I would fix it, whatever it was, windows, doors, plumbing. That was my service. So Prabhupada came, and th that, funny, I mean, there was no talk of it, but on the weekend before Prabhupada is coming, they said, oh, we want to build a new Vyasasana. And I told this story the other night. And we're like, okay. You know, you know it was, it's, it's the Vyasasana that's in the Brooklyn Temple. Now, it's quite large. And, you know, we're not professional carpenters. There was one devotee who, Jivadar, who was a semi-professional. But we just accepted that that's what they want, so we'll do it. So we started gathering the materials and knocking it out, but obviously it wasn't, it wasn't going as quickly as we thought. So day after day and night after night, we were up until the moment Srila Prabhupada walked into the temple room. We were still putting the finishing touches on it. So somehow or other, that was always the situation, the last minute touches on something like this. But it was nectar. <clears throat> The anticipation, waiting for Srila Prabhupada to come, was in itself a certain uh, bliss, you could say. And engaging in these activities that were challenging and at the same time fulfilling gave us a great sense of satisfaction, of accomplishment, that we're able to do these things for the pure devotee. And when even at that time, our concept of Srila Prabhupada I had been listening to his lectures. We knew he was not an ordinary person. 
What he was exactly, I wasn't sure, but we knew he was not an ordinary person. He was, of course, we would, you know, the devotees would say that, yes, he's the, the pure devotee representative, but that, those, those were just words to us newcomers at the time. But when Srila Prabhupada sat in the Vyasa time, and the first time I'm seeing him in person, and, and it was, um, you know, and everybody has different stories, but there is no question, like Jagannath was saying, Prabhupada led the Jai Radha Madhava prayers, and, you know, I'd been in every musical venue in New York City for years, and they had this place and that place and this festival and that, but I had never been in the presence of someone so powerful, and he was just sitting there playing these hand cymbals, and we were mesmerized, and I, we didn't know, I didn't know why. He's chanting this Sanskrit shloka. I, I didn't, I had no idea what it, what it was, what it meant. But his, just the sound vibration alone was carrying us to a place we'd never been. We'd never been there. I thought to myself, is this real? Am I actually feeling this? Or is it just some anticipation, some, you know, some hallucination? But by that time, we had already stopped all forms of intoxication. So I thought, what is this? But, and it wasn't just something that happened one time. Every time Srila Prabhupada sang Jai Radha Madhava, the devotees were riding on these waves of ecstasy. Just incredible. And, and, and no one, the devotees, none of them could could be there and could not be contained. It was so spontaneous and so genuine that they would just, like I said, they would just be lifting, jumping up in the air. And, and, and all Prabhupada's doing is just playing. And of course, by that time, someone had picked up a Madanga and the Kirtan got up. And one time, in the middle of this, of Jai Radhamadava, Prabhupada got up off the Vyasa San and started to dance with the devotees. And this was, this was the evening, actually, because he, he would speak twice in a day, morning and evening. And then before we knew it, there was a full-fledged kirtan, because the ecstasy was just so... Nobody wanted to stop. Even Srila Prabhupada didn't want to stop. So these things cemented, you know, our immature understanding of the potency of a pure devotee, whether we understood the actual concept or not. But we had... A, genuine experience now so that when as we began to read we understood what is this chaya bab what is this shadow you know how is Prabhupada able to do these things and how are we able to experience it so this just increased our faith more and more and I had actually made a commitment during his morning class the next day that I would stay I didn't tell I was embarrassed to tell the Tamil president, you know, that I would, I had made up my mind, especially after they'd been telling me for months that I should move in and like this, but it, it, I was, I just, it, somehow or other, Prabhupada's presence, you know, was, was the, the, the potency that brought me over to understand what my duty and obligation was at that point. And then from, I never looked back. I mean, obviously, sometimes Maya tries to, especially after you surrender, Maya tries to attract you. Because Prabhupada described that when you come to Krishna, you're declaring war on Maya. And when you declare war on somebody, they don't just sit still. No, they take all their stockpile of ammunition and they start throwing it. And so all of this is coming just so intense but by the association of all these devotees and the potency of the prasadam and the program and, and the kirtan and the kirtan was such a wonderful thing we would go out all day long on hurry now but then we would rush back to the temple to do the seven o'clock gore arti because it never became tired it never became hackneyed this was the other point that somehow or other became, I had that I, the real, small realization how, the, the, how powerful the holy name is. 
and Agni Dev and Jai Sachinada and these devotees, Vishwagada, they would lead this seven o'clock Sunda Arti, and everything, all of our, whatever doubts we'd had during the course of the day, if any, just melted away in the ecstasy of you know, Harinam. Again, continuation. So it was such a tight program. There was really no time for Maya. You know, but, you know, you, you, you still had to be careful. So our experiences with Srila Prabhupada, of course, at, at that time, we were all new devotees. We kept a respectful distance. You know, we weren't trying to, at least from my side, I had nothing to, to question Srila Prabhupada. I, I felt that everything that I'd ever wanted to know, I'd already found out in his books. So what, what, what should I ask? You know, for me, it was not necessary. I had no doubt whatsoever. So therefore, I, I just tried to find some place in his service and make myself useful. And that wasn't difficult. There are so many, in, in the temple, there are so many services. I found that, you know, the devotees had told me, he said, don't try to see Krishna. Just act in such a way that Krishna will see you. So I took that to heart, that this is an indication that we shouldn't make a show of devotion. Shouldn't, it's not something artificial that one wears externally on his sleeve. So I tried to find those things which I could do for Srila Prabhupada, the small things, to take care of his quarters, make everything very nice and clean. Whatever was there, we had that training that everything should be white glove clean. In the military, if you clean a place, the person in charge, he comes with a white glove and he touches every surface. And if he looks at it and there's dust, you're in trouble. So we tried to clean everything in Prabhupada's quarters that clean, that nothing could be found. Because Prabhupada could find anything, anything that was broken or not correct or out of place. Because the super soul, he's, what, what doesn't Srila Prabhupada know? He knows everything. But we tried to do our best. So we got to clean his bathroom, we got to clean his quarters, whatever was there, his plates. And that gave us some, in, you know, to, to do these, this service and to have that consciousness that we're cleaning the quarters of the ambassador to the Supreme Personality of God. This is not an ordinary person. We always cultivated that mentality. Srila Prabhupada is not an ordinary person. Mm -hmm. You know, but this was, anyway, this, again, everyone has their internal source of inspiration, what keeps him going in Krishna consciousness. And mine was always to try to do service for Srila Prabhupada, whatever could be done, and also that service that no one else wanted to do. If you can believe that there's some service that someone didn't want to do. Hard to believe, right? Isn't it hard to believe? We have a whole temple. And there are services that some people you ask. I was a temple commander. I used to go around. I'd say, Prabhu, can you help? No, Prabhu, I'm busy. I'm sick. I'm not. But so many excuses. You never knew that there were so many excuses. Until you're the temple commander. And that's okay. This is all out of love. There's nothing by force. But yet... We're thinking, Srila Prabhupada is here. He's Krishna's personal representative. And this is his temple. How can we say no? So that's the attitude that we try to cultivate. That this, is, this should be our honor. That if there's some service to be done, I should be the first one, not the last one. I should be the first. But sometimes, like I said, it's a matter of your, uh, the attachment you cultivate for your service 
and how you see that service in relation to Prashila Prabhupada. It's a personal service. It's not that it's coming down to the temple commander, through the temple president, through the vice president, from Lord Brahma, wherever. No. This is coming directly from the spiritual master. But he has his agents. So I was always very happy to serve. That was one thing that kept me, uh, at least in my situation, in, in good consciousness. That I, I tried to cultivate this favorable service attitude. It's, it's a bit of a, how can you say, it's an exercise. You know what they say, that uh, such activities are a matter of practice. And when you're, you know, we have terms like habit. You have a good habit and a bad habit. But a bad habit is bad activities practiced repeatedly. And the same holds true for good habits. It's a good activity practiced repeatedly. You know, so it takes a certain effort. And so in the old days, we tried to, amongst ourselves, cultivate that attitude, that favorable service attitude. We weren't conspiring how to escape service. You know, sometimes that's there. Only one time, but we weren't escaping the service. Prabhupada had left, he had come in March, and he would stay for three days in New York, and he would go to the next center. And depending on the location of the center, devotees would go see Srila Prabhupada, as long as they could. It's an imposition on the temple. There's not usually room. Like in our temple, devotees were sleeping in the stairwells when Prabhupada would come. That's how crowded it became. So somehow or other, the uh, information came, Srila Prabhupada's going to be in Philadelphia for the Philadelphia Rathiatra. So this is June. So in March, he was in New York. And in June, he was going to be at the Philly Rathiatra. So... You know, we're thinking, you know, there's certain, it's like when you have a service, you have an obligation, you can't escape it. You can't just drop it and say, well, I'm not going to clean the temple today. I'm going to go see Srila Prabhupada. No, it doesn't. You can find someone, and that wasn't so easy to do, try to find someone to stay while you went to see Srila Prabhupada. Everybody wanted to see Srila Prabhupada. But in any case, the temple president had left us because we were the, basically the skeleton crew. One pujari, one cook, me the temple commander, and one other devotee. So we thought, okay, what to do? This is our service, you know. But over the course, we had all basically finished, because every day we went out on Sankirtan. So the temple was closed in any case, except for one or two persons. Like I said, one pujari and, and a cook. Everybody else was out on Sankirtan. So we thought, well, we could do the same thing today also. So we kind of drew straws. And we decided, okay, who's going to do this? Who's going to do that? And we sort of made up, like, okay, well, if you stay, I'll, I'll give you the Mahaprasadam. Because <laughs> I know the combination to the lock. And, you know, and then we'll go, and that'll be the exchange. So when we finally got that all straightened out, we went and we, we got the one vehicle that was left, because all the other vehicles had gone to Philly with the other devotees. And it was our, we had a panel truck, which was a multi-purpose truck. We used it for Harinam, the garbage run, the boga run, the trash run. It was the, literally the multi-purpose truck. So we hopped in that and we started driving. And it, it, it's a five-hour road, road trip. And so we got there just as the parade was finishing. And Srila Prabhupada was just about to give his festival lecture. And we had parked the truck and we walked in. And as soon as we walked in, the temple president looked at us and saw us and said, what are you doing here? Because <laughs> we had literally, 
you know, we'd gone AWOL from our post. Absent without leave, that's the term it's used. We were absent without leave. He had told us to stay, but we all, some of us said, said Prabhu, we, we had to come and see Srila Prabhupada. And he could understand, he, he's not, you know, Gopi Janababa was such a soft, sweet devotee. You know, it was just, he was just amazing, his character. And so he looked at us and said, said, you better be back in time for your evening duties. And we said, yes, yes. That was a five hour trip. So Prabhupada gave his festival lecture and then he came inside and gave another lecture on uh, Srimad Bhagavatam. And many devotees were getting their second initiation that day. And so we listened to the lecture. Very nice to associate, we had the feast. And then as soon as the lecture was over, as soon as the feast was over, Gopi John Baba looked over at us, <laughs> which was our signal, now you have to drive home, you have to get back. And so that was the thing. We never really tried to escape service. But when Srila Prabhupada was there, we would kind of make some adjustment to try to get everything done and still see Srila Prabhupada because there was just so much nectar to go there and see Srila Prabhupada. And you all have that feeling, I'm sure. You know, it's, you've experienced it to some extent. And of course, that mood that Srila Prabhupada is coming or that Srila Prabhupada is here doesn't have to be lost. When I came in to Vrindavan, I had stayed in New York for 10 years, 1984, 1974 to 1984 continuously. And then there was an opportunity, and these are opportunities that don't, you know, we weren't, I wasn't looking to change my service really, but circumstances were such that I had just finished the construction of the Brooklyn Temple, and I was the vice president, and it became somehow or other information filtered down that Srila Prabhupada's Samadhi, they had stopped the construction. And I thought that's very odd. How, how and why would the construction of Srila Prabhupada's Samadhi be stopped? I mean, this is, you know, I was shocked actually that this is our beloved spiritual master you would think that this would be the, the single highest priority of the entire society to complete his final resting place. So I was shocked and was also a little disappointed that what, what, how is this? And I felt that this was a, there was a certain malaise, a certain, uh, how can you say, symptom that something was wrong in uh, society. But this was just one person's opinion. It wasn't something that was fact or this, but I, I felt so strongly that I thought, if I can do something to help, if Krishna would allow, then maybe I could go and do. So I asked Gopal Krishna Maharaj, because Gopal Krishna Maharaj always used to come through New York, and we were good friends from the early days at Henry Street. And he always told me, oh, and he's, Gopal Krishna Maharaj is very, very, um, how can you say, intelligent, how to get manpower. So he would always come through, and even though I was the vice president of the temple there, he would say, come, come to India. I'll, you can be the vice president in Bombay. I said, I said, Maharaj, you already have two vice presidents in Bombay. You know, one was Prasanatma, I forget who the other one was. I said, what are, you, what are you saying? He said, no, 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 come, I'll pay your ticket, you come, get your visa. So, you know, I said, Marge, I have my service here. But then the next time you came was when there was this change. I said, okay, Marge. I said, you're always saying I should come to India. So now, I want to go to India. I said, oh, good, 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 we'll make all arrangements. I said, I said nobody's building Prabhupada Samadhi. He said, no, no, you should come to Bombay. I said, Marge, I want to go and do something Prabhupada Samadhi. I said, oh, okay. But what he didn't say was, you know, 
here's your ticket. <laughs> so I thought, okay, so that's all right. I have Krishna's blessings. I have Maharaj's blessings. He said, okay. But now I have to make some arrangements. How to get to India. So we didn't have much. I was grahasta at that time. Uh, newly married, young daughter. And, but I was determined that somehow or other I should come to Vrindavan. And we collected the, the funds somehow. We got our passports. And we flew to Vrindavan. And we came never, you know, my wife had never been here before. We didn't know what was, what facilities were available. But Krishna was so kind that as soon as there, I was there, my friend Toshan Krishna, he said, no, no, stay here temporarily in the guest house. He was guest house in charge at that time. And we'll fix something up. And then I came and I came to Srila Prabhupada Samaya and I paid my obeisances. I'd been there. Actually, uh, uh, Bibi Govindamara just posted a photo on Dandavats. He gave a nice uh, article how, you know, when Srila Prabhupada passed, what had happened, how he became the Pujari. And there's a photo of there of the Prabhupada Samadhi right after he entered Samadhi. It's just a mound that was over Srila Prabhupada's head where we had the Danda to mark the spot. So I took that photo just after Srila Prabhupada left. So that was, and I, I didn't get that photo back until I came to Vrindavan again after 20 years. It was in a box of storage that I had left here when I left Vrindavan in 1990. And all these slides I got back. Amazingly. Usually once you leave a place, you never get anything back. Everything is gone. But that and my Bhagavad Gita, my original Bhagavad Gita, was found in a trunk that was stored up in the top of the Samadhi, somehow or other. That was interesting. But, so I paid my obeisances and I, said, I asked Srila Prabhupada, whatever, you, whatever I can do, because I don't know, you know, this, I'm here to serve you. But this, uh, this construction is obviously not, not like the construction in America, where we could go down to the uh, building supply store and buy everything we needed in one place and bring it back and do the construction and finish everything in a, a few months. But I thought this is a, such a special project. Yes, it, obviously it must get done. So I met up with Surabi Maharaj and Gunanava Prabhu's at the architectural ministry in the old Punjabi Bagh building. That was the first Punjabi Bag temple. And they gave me their blessings, but they indicated that there was not much funds. And I thought, why is there not much funds? You know, we've been collecting for years to build a samadhi. But he indicated there were some problems, the way the funds are being transferred and coming from Europe. I said, okay. I said, but do we have money? He says, yeah, there's some money. I said, so what do we need to do? He said, well, you have to just go on site, examine the situation, see what marble's there, go to Makrana. I, I had, you know, Makrana, like I said, it was, there was no building supply store. When I asked, what's Makrana? He said, oh, that's where you get the marble. I said, where is it? Oh, it's, you know, it's in the desert, you know, 500 kilometers away. I said, okay. And that's when we took those trains that they were joking about this morning, coal-burning trains that spew this black soot. And you have to sit on them for 12 hours and you either have the window shut and you roast in the summer heat with one noisy fan blowing hot air, or you open the window and you breathe the, the coal dust and you get black. So that was how we used to have to go to get our building supplies. But this was, this is what we signed up for. This was the, the nectar. And when the first truck of marble came, we had, after so many years, it had not come. We had a, we did what the bridge bosses do. We bought suites for all the labor and we unloaded the truck and we had a, a mini celebration because now work was going to start again. 
And so that work took six years, from 1984 to 1990, to get all the marble from the mines and the mysteries to hand carve the marble. But there were some tricks we did in between. Because when we first went there and we saw how they were mining the marble, I thought to myself, we'll be here for 100 years. Matter of fact, I went to one place in Agra to see the quality of marble work. Everyone may know there's this place called Dial Bog. It's the Samadhi of, of Radha Swami. Some eclectic click, eclectic click, some sect, Radha Swami. So he died in 1909. And we went to see the, the work, and they're still building his samadhi. <laughs> they're still building it. And we went there, and the marble work is exquisite. The grapes that are carved, you look like you could take them off and eat them. So fine, the work. But the samadhi is unfinished. I thought, well, I don't want to be here for 100 years. I said, what do we do? So I went there and I saw that these mines, they're pit mines in Makrana. And you can only get the marble out before the rainy season. Otherwise, you have to wait. So there's quite a lot of activity. And the point is, you don't know exactly where the white marble is. It's just all brown. You can't see through the patina of the stone. And you're sort of by the mysteries and nestopities, they, they have a sixth sense from historical, like where, what level it's on, what depth it's in, what, so many things. And you have to, it's like, it's like gambling. You have to reserve a, a particular part of the mine because there's a high potential that it will be white marble. And then you have to be there when the time comes that they're about to expose it. Because if it is white, there are people on site who will pay a premium for the marble that you already reserved. A cutthroat business. Amazing. And we're all learning this on the fly. How to do these things. And so, as I'm there learning all these things and I'm watching the mysteries, the mysteries are using a hand chisel and a hammer to pound holes into this line of marble a hundred feet long. And that's all they do, they just sit there, tong, tong, tong. And they're gonna drill a hole, the depth that they want to expose. What they do is they pack these holes with black powder. And then they put a fuse, and I was thinking, how efficient could this be? One wrong calculation and everything becomes marble chips. But they put it in there and they stand back and they light it and it just goes boom. And it's just enough to loosen it. But it takes days for them to do it. Days. And then they start again for the next level. I'm thinking, oh my God, we'll be here forever. So we thought, okay, what can we do? So I talked to the mine owner, I said, have you never heard of compressed air, rotary pneumatic tools? I mean, you know, this is the 20th century. We were still in the 20th century. And he was like, what, 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 what's get, what does it mean for me? I said, it means more marble for you. It means quicker turnover. So we showed him brochures and he was interested and they, finally they implemented this process and we cut their production down from seven days to one day. And we thought, oh, we're making some progress. But then they took the blocks, these huge blocks that they'd taken out, and they put them in a machine that they, they would buy one machine from Italy. Remember, this is India. They would buy one machine from Italy, and then they would reverse engineer it and build duplicates. So it was a machine based on a design of a machine made in Italy. But the machine in Italy, and what it is, is it's a reciprocating, it's a multi-bladed reciprocal saw. So you've got eight or 10 blades, you can put as many as you want as a cam, and it, and it rotates like this. And you have blocks of marble lined up, and these blades just go back and forth, 
sawing the marble. But the blades are supposed to have diamond bits on them. And they were too cheap to buy the diamond bits. So they came up with a system. It's just a flat iron strip. And they would pour a slurry. Do you know what a slurry is? A mixture of sand and water. And it would pour into the machine as they cut. And so that's what they used for cutting the marble. Sand and water. Okay, guess how many days it took to cut one block of marble? <laughs> it would take four days. So we made them quick on one end, and then they, we had to wait for them to cut the marble. So we said, this won't work. So then we got diamond bits, and we, took, we made an exchange from our contract. So we would deduct a certain amount, and we gave them the diamond bits, and they put them on the saw, and it went from four days to four hours. Four hours. Because otherwise, like I said, we were going to be here forever. I'd be an old man. And I didn't mind. I actually prayed that I could stay here as long as the samadhi was complete. But you always have to be careful for what you pray for. Because as soon as the samadhi was complete, Radharani said, okay, time to go. You're finished here. So I should have delayed it longer, but no, that's not our, our service is to build it as quickly as possible for Srila Prabhupada. And whatever Krishna wants to do, he does. So it took six years. And every day for those six years, we got to have Srila Prabhupada's association. I never for a once thought that Srila Prabhupada is not there. He was always in our minds, in our hearts, that we're doing this for you. And every day we would offer our service that Srila Prabhupada, we've got another layer of marble. We're getting closer to completion. We're a little bit closer. Every day a little bit closer. And he's sitting right there observing everything. And so that was our consciousness. And, ho and you can do, you can have that consciousness in any service. It's not just that Srila Prabhupada's here and his Vapu's here. And so this is special. It is. But it's just as special if you have that Vapu in your heart. You know, Prabhupada said, I have not gone. I am not going. I have simply gone into your heart. And he told us that. And we, we took that to, to heart. And he had a very, told us very clearly one time, and it's a little disturbing, actually, when we heard it. He said, when I leave, many of my disciples will leave. He said, don't be surprised who leaves. Be surprised who stays. So this was a very, for us, we, we were very hurt. Because it was difficult for us to think, who would leave Srila Prabhupada's shelter? <coughs> but it came to pass. So there's a great lesson that if you do not fix this service up in your heart, if you do not fix this attitude this determination, this vyavasaya mika buddhi eke harakuru nandana, then it will all just be some sentiment. It's something that you have to do every single day. And you cannot be shy about asking Krishna, please engage me however you want to engage me. It's not that, well, please engage me like this, or maybe please engage me like that, or, you know, no, it's, it's and then when Krishna does, you have to think very carefully about what have, I, what have I just done? I have asked Krishna to engage me every single day. Please engage me in your service. And then the temple commander comes and says, Prabhu, can you help with the pots, please? We're backed up. And you say, no, I don't want to. You know, I'm, not, I'm a Sankirtan devotee. I'm a Pujari. This is Maya. This is Maya. Yes, we have our duties. I may be a pujari. But if I'm in my room for four hours and there's no one else to do something, am I not a servant of Krishna? Are there pots any different to Dhyanam? Any different from Krishna? From dressing Krishna? From bathing Krishna? Prabhupada told us that these pots are non different from Krishna. You know, it wasn't just the temple commander in those days telling us this to trick us. Because when we cleaned those pots, we felt 
the same as if when we were cleaning and bathing the deities. There was no difference. Absolutely no difference. And that realization allowed us to cultivate that appreciation that this service and that service, there's no difference. And to see a difference is to be completely bewildered. You know, some people say, no, no, it's not. No, it is. Moga samoga kamana, moga jnana viteja. Yes. How else can you explain that? That someone is differentiating between service. So we have to get beyond that. Because there will come a time when you're asked, when Krishna, through the pure devotee, somehow he will appear to you through an instruction in your heart or through some external agency and you will be pressed into service. And then you will have that choice. This whole life is simply about how you receive that choice. And then that may be your service for seven years or 10 years or 30 years. And it may be the best thing you ever did, but you will never know if you don't accept it. You'll never know. You know I mean, you, it's, it's all a progressive level of surrender. And as we do it, Krishna gives us so much mercy. And we have to, Marge is giving me the cutoff sign. You know what this means. Going to the next level. But we have Srila Prabhupada to thank for all this. I hope everyone has this opportunity to reflect personally on how Srila Prabhupada has, what he means, what Srila Prabhupada means to him in his life and what the debt of obligation we owe to him and how it can never be repaid. Srila Prabhupada Ki! Yeah. Thank you, Hansarupa Prabhu, for your wonderful service to Srila Prabhupada. And we somehow try to follow in your footsteps to follow Srila Prabhupada. So now it's going to be uh, the Arctic, special Arctic for Srila Prabhupada in his house, 720 